Thailand have some of the best food in the world and today we are in Chiang Mai, Northern Thailand. We're going on the ultimate Northern Thai food adventure. Talking about the legendary cow soy. Look how beautiful it looks. Unreal barbecued chicken. Juicy succulent pork. Look at that, the beautiful pork knuckles. That is the broth, the brown beautiful sauce and it looks incredible. And even to the extreme, raw bloody beef. Which looks pretty damn crazy, huh? Let's go and try this on its own. I mean, just look at that, huh? Whoa. And I'm very hungry, guys, so let's go and get a feed. All right, guys, we are at the very first stop, and this place is legendary. We're here for some cow soy. This is cow soy Islam. Menu is quite simple as well. You've got maybe 10 to 12 items. They're specialized in two items in which I have ordered already. Very, very keen. What I've ordered is a cow soy, which I'll detail in a little bit. But something else that you're supposed to get here as well is the cow mok, which is essentially Thai biryani, which is what I got as well with some goat meat. Very homey feel here though. I'm gonna be honest, it's one grammar essentially in front. She's making the noodles, pouring the broth in, she's sort of handling everything. As always, we're gonna go for the broth first, most definitely. Look how beautiful it looks. Here we go. Ooh. That's incredible. It's essentially a coconut curry. That broth or curry is delicious. It's rich, creamy, slightly spicy as well. It really, really tasty coconut milk and it's the turmeric that really gives it that bright yellow reddish color. Before I add any additional spices and vegetables, I'm going for a bite of the noodles which look and smell incredible. That's so good. Perfect amount of flavor. In this dish, they've got beef, but yellow, whitish noodles as well. They've also added in these fried, crispy noodles on top as well. So it gives that beautiful contrast of the soft noodles with the beautiful, crispy noodles as well. The reason why this place is so famous is that the recipe is supposedly really, really close to the original recipe that the Chinese Muslim traders and immigrants brought through. The Chinese Muslim traders and immigrants journeyed through the 19th to the 20th century, passing through Burma and Laos, eventually ending up in Northern Thailand. With them, they brought their famous noodle culture and also they picked up coconut milk and spices through Burma and voila, this dish was born. Do you want to try some of the beef? Wow, that's so soft. This must have been raised in the pot for a long time. I'm going to go ahead and add in some of these pickled greens and the onions as well. Let's just add it all in. And then a little bit of lime. Most Thai dishes, you'll see a lot of these sauces and condiments on the side, but I actually quite like it like this already. But now I've got the onions and the pickled greens in there as well, so this should be delicious. Have a big bite. Hmm. Adding in those additional veggies adds another level of, level of flavor. That's really damn good. Now this, this is a small, I believe. This is a Thai biryani. I was in India early last year, had biryani, and I've fallen in love with biryani. So when I found out that they had a special dish here in Thailand, and supposedly this place is a must, Oh my god, you know I had to get it. The beautiful yellow rice, turmeric, and then you've got the beautiful fried shallots on top. Oh my god, it smells incredible. And goat. I got here at 9 a.m. and you want to come here early because once they run out of the goat, you've got the chicken and beef, I believe, but apparently goat is the go-to. Let's try this. Go for a spoon of the rice and biryani first.
Damn. Okay. That's beautiful. Rice is nice, soft, slightly mushy as well. It's not hard or bouncy, but it's these little fried shallots on top that add so much flavor. Incredible. Not spicy though. Normally when I have biryani, Pakistani biryani, Indian biryani, there's a kick of spice, but this is plain. There's no spice at all. You probably will add your own. Let's go in for some of this goat. Well, the goat is quite soft. That sort of just fell right off the bone. That is so soft. It literally just disintegrated in my mouth. Flavors are beautiful as well. Nothing overpowering. Very mild on the on the palate, but incredible, incredible flavors. Biryani comes with this green little sauce, and it's a bit spicy. I've tried it. I'm gonna assume that you're supposed to put it onto the biryani. This is my first time having this, so let's try this. Look at that. Look at that color. It's beautiful. Oh, it's like a sweet, soury chili sauce. I've never had anything quite like that in Thailand before, so this is the first for me. Hopefully, I'm eating it the right way. I do give you this soup as well. So let's try this. Might be a winter melon, some sort of melon soup. Very plain, more of a palate cleanser. They do have this chili sauce on the side, which I've heard is absolutely incredible here. So let's put on a little bit. Right, let's go for the perfect bite. A little bit of the goat, and then that satay, and the biryani. One of the Mmm. That's nice. It's sweet, but spicy. The spice lingers. That's a good combination. Even though that goat is quite tender, some bits are quite tough to get off, so you just gotta come here and pick it up with your hands, guys. Mmm. That is divine. Really, really good. Look at this. Little cat's just jumped up here. You right, buddy? Do you reckon cats eat this? You want some? No, I'll leave it here. You don't want it. Cats are very picky eaters. Uh, probably likes fish, but not a fan of goat biryani. What? You going for it? You don't want it. Why are you getting closer to me then? <laughs> Guys, that was cow soy Islam noodles. Incredible. Like I've mentioned, definitely the best cow soy that I've had here in Chiang Mai. And I've had a few. That beautiful noodles. Oh my God. The coconut turmeric broth. Incredible with the yellow whitish noodles with the crispy noodles on top and the beef. Incredible as well. But then if you come here, definitely get the cow mok with the goat. Oh my god, it's essentially Thai biryani, but then it's the fried shallots on top with the rice that's so beautiful and then the goat that's so succulent. Oh, that was an incredible way to start off this northern Thai Chiang Mai food tour. Let's go to the next joint. Alrighty guys, we've made it out to the next destination, about a 10 minute drive from the center of Chiang Mai. This place is Ton Lap Yong, and it is very, very famous for minced beef. Guys, I've grabbed a seat, and this place is beautiful. The architecture, the interior design is just very outdoorsy. <laughs> I mean, as soon as you walk in, it's all wooden architecture. It's quite large as well. This place is quite famous as well. And it's famous for the spicy minced pork lab and also the spicy minced beef lab. Now lab, you know what? I'll show you guys in a little bit once we do some of the ordering, but it's a very, very simple menu. Only a few select dishes. We've got a lot of soups, curries, we've got frog, tilapia, shrimp, a lot of seafood, but we're gonna go for what's recommended. The spicy minced pork lab and the spicy minced beef lab. I've got a cooked 
dish and also a raw bloody dish as well which should be an interesting experience i think a lot of asian countries have a dish very similar i know the vietnamese do lao does countries on the border of northern thailand most definitely have there you go you guys look at that we have an absolute feast on our hands actually you know what it's a relatively small size couple of dishes of meat difficult to start off with the spicy marinated beef la it's raw it's bloody oh it's very fragrant it's very the, the herbs sort of punch you in the face in this dish there's obviously the raw beef that's the red stuff you can just see right there which looks pretty damn crazy huh but it's so vibrant as well we've got rumen i believe which is the stomach area which is that weird little spiky looking thing <laughs> we've got nutmeg coriander clove and cardamom as well it's the nutmeg and cardamom that makes it smell very pungent very strong now if i'm totally honest i've never had anything like this before so i'm not exactly sure on how to eat it but i'm going to assume you eat it with the vegetables the herbs that we have here and the sticky rice which i ordered as well let's go and try this on its own i mean just look at that huh? whoa that was a big bite my health up that is very very strong it's really just the nutmeg and cardamom that really kicks you in the face and then there's a bit of chilies or some sort of spice that lingers i'll be honest i'm not the biggest fan of that on its own initially the aftertaste is nice once that cardamom that nutmeg flavor reduces so grab a piece of the i think this is lettuce or cabbage get a little bit of the raw lab on top right there some of these herbs as well boys definitely right on there okay money bite let's try this mm. that's so much better those herbs immediately reduce the cardamom nutmeg flavor and i can't really taste it as much look at the sticky rice as well mm. that's a magical combination when you combine the three now let's try this part of the stomach as well mm. that's nice we've done a great job of cleaning it up the might have blanched it it's nice relatively soft a little bit bouncy chewy the stomach normally is but mild flavor is nothing really to it this is the minced pork i'm unsure on the exact uh, ingredients in this but it looks like there are definitely the coriander chili onions as well from the looks yeah. oh no you know what that's actually just pork fat let's go ahead and try this oh. now we are talking this is delicious it's on the salty side of the flavors but i think once we mix this in with the veggies it's going to be incredible okay guys another piece of the veg some of these herbs as well spoon of the beautiful minced pork lab look at that that looks delicious let's go in wow that's incredible chase with a bit of sticky rice sticky rice the veg and the cooked pork lab honestly that's incredible this one right here is definitely an acquired taste if you're not used to strong herbs and spices this one will kick you in the face so i balance it out with the veggies sticky rice now the origins of this dish as well i mean we call it an ancient salad and the story goes it possibly originates from the yunnan province of southwest china 
but then it spread to Myanmar or, or Burma as it used to be called and then eventually to northern Thailand and to Lao. And I believe that Lao, Lab, is actually the national dish there. So you'll find a lot of it there. Hey guys, that was Lap Don Yon. Now, very, very unique dish. My first time having raw bloody mince Lab. It's definitely an acquired taste. A little bit too strong for my liking, but the spicy mince pork, that was incredible. The flavors on that are absolutely delicious. It's a little bit of a travel, maybe 10 to 15 minutes outside of um, the main center of Chiang Mai. It's a bit of a travel, but coming here with the group, uh, it's definitely worth it, I reckon. Very, very good food here. Okay. Hunk up. We're here, guys. Bye bye. Love the bike, huh? <laughs> it's so cool. Hey, guys, we're here to grab a coffee. Um, we're at. What is this? Shireen homemade pies since 1992. I've struggled to find really good coffee in places like Bangkok. To be honest, all over um, Thailand, except Chiang Mai. The coffee in Chiang Mai has been really, really good. I've lived in Australia, I've lived in Vietnam. That's where coffee is generally really, really good. But Chiang Mai, it's very good as well. I was doing a bit of research and there are reasons why, which we'll explain in a little bit. But let's go check out Shireen homemade pies. This place is very unique. for their pies so what and also their coffees uh, have a menu oh here okay i've ordered and cannot wait coffee looks incredible the artwork that they do here is is what they're renowned for and the pies are quite famous now i know this isn't thai food itself but need a coffee need to pick me up this place is quite beautiful as well it's a very old school vintage feel to it Everything's sort of made out of wood. The coloring is very old school. It's very vibrant as well, which is nice. You've got this beautiful outdoor area, which is awesome as well. And a lot of people just chilling, having coffee. Oh, thank you. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. Guys, check this out. This is art. This is incredible. That's me. That's so cool. I got a latte, and if you order one of the milk drinks here, they're able to print out your artwork. I just airdropped in my photo, and then look at this. This is the star of the show. Actually, that's that's the star, but this is their best seller. This is a coconut pie. Look at that. That looks incredible. Yeah, the pies here are famous. I was mentioning. We've got so many coconut pies, mango cream pies, all the cream pies, the chocolate pies, and a whole list of coffees and the interior design is beautiful. But tell me this coconut pie does not look delicious. Wow. It looks like it's a layer of coconut and I don't know, some sort of cream on the bottom. Let's dig in and go for a little bite. Oh, it just breaks apart like no tomorrow. Right, let's give this a shot, shall we? Whoa. I was not expecting that at all. It's so soft. This part, it's almost like foam. It literally breaks apart. The bottom has a nice hard base to it. And it's quite, it's a little bit salty and coconutty. Wow. This is delicious. Mm, the bottom is this beautiful little base that's nice and crispy and it's got actual coconut pieces in it as well this is really really delicious guys we've got this beautiful cafe i think i've got a latte it looks amazing the artwork is impeccable oh my gosh <sighs> mm, that's nice simple coffee I got a dark roast as well. There's a few roasts that you can get. Light, medium to dark. I'm a sucker for that dark roast. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. If you didn't know, Chiang Mai is actually the coffee capital of Thailand. So it makes sense why coffee is so, so damn good here. It is a little story that really piqued my interest as to why coffee is so renowned here. The coffee and tea was introduced to the hill tribes in the mountainous regions of Chiang Mai in the 1980s. And get this as a cash crop alternative to selling 
opium puppies. Immigrants from China in early 19th century brought in opium and by the end of the 1950s, the Thai, Myanmar or Burma, Lao border became an international hub for opium production and distribution. From 1958 and over the next 30 odd years, a plan was put in place to remove opium but whilst helping farmers replace that source of income. The government wanted to help farmers replace that income by selling fruits, flowers, vegetables and tea and coffee. Eventually the government introduced a strain of Arabica from Central America that was well suited to the region and it thrived. And now 20, 30, 40 years later Thailand is the third leading coffee producer in Asia. And if you come to Chiang Mai you'll see trendy cafes that don't really fit in with Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai's got this old school slightly rural vibe to it but then you'll see super trendy cafes just like you would in Australia, Melbourne. It's amazing. Go ahead. Pie is destroyed. That was delicious. Coffee. It's still got the artwork on it which is pretty damn cool eh? Highly highly recommend Shireen Pie. Pie. 9 out of 10. It's not sweet so you can sort of keep eating it. It's slightly on the salty savory side for some weird reason but a water and a coffee balances it out perfectly. Guys, here we are. We are at Roast Chicken Witchery. This place is packed right now. They specialize in, as you can tell, yes, chicken. Gopong up, I'll sit. All right, but this is what it's like, eh? Just over here, they are drilling up all of the chickens. Wow, there's so many there. See if we can get a bit of a close-up. It's a bit dark, but so many chickens here. It smells like a goddamn barbecue in here. The smells of the chicken and that, that smoke is incredible. At least I'm a fan of it. But they specialize in a few things here. It's a lot of somtum, so like salads. They've got some soups as well. But what you come here for is the chicken. They've got some minced salads as well. Um, Papaya salad, basically. Uh, Nick Noy. Yeah. And half drilled chicken. Oh, and s I said sticky rice already? Sticky and one. Yeah, one place. I've just ordered, I've jumped up to the front just to check out the action here as well. We've got one uncle who's just cooking around about 30 to 40 chickens on that grill. It's so smoky. This guy is an artist. Right, here we have uncle chopping up the chicken. I'll take one, one. Beautiful roast chicken. And then on the side here, you've just got the aunties, the grandmas making the somtoms, the salads. It's a whole conveyor belt. Three dishes essentially. You've got the sticky rice staple, which is what you need with the grilled chicken. This is also called Gai Yang, which is Thai grilled chicken essentially. It's got a beautiful fresh papaya salad as well. So it's somtom, raw papaya, got shrimp, a little bit of chili, green beans, carrots, and fish sauce and lime as well, I believe. I believe we've got this Nam Jim Jiao, which is a special sauce that goes with the grilled chicken, or any grilled meats, really. Let's go in and try the famous grilled chicken here. Try it on its own first. That's incredible. The chicken is so soft and juicy. You bite right through it. The skin isn't crispy though. I was waiting for the salad, so it might be a little bit softer now, but it's damn good. Let's try it in with the sauce. Nam Jim Jiao with the Gai Yang. Match made in heaven. The dipping sauce is it's like sweet, but tangy, spicy as well. It's incredible. I've never had that in really any other cuisine or country before. It's really good with the chicken. Sticky rice staple as well. A little bit of this with it. I've got the papaya salad, the somtam. This is so refreshing. One of my favorite salads in the world. Let's try this. So refreshing, so light. This is a must when you're eating something like this. With the meat or the sauce can be a little bit too salty. This is a perfect balance. 
Because our leg was incredible, but the true test is how is the chicken breast? If this is too dry, then it's not a good place. Let's try this. Ten out of ten. Bit by through that, it's so juicy, so succulent. Let's go in with the Nam Jim Gel. Such a weird flavor, but it's quite addicting. Stick your ass. And the Somtom. Hey guys, we are out. That was roast chicken witchin berry. Hopefully I haven't butchered that, but excellent, excellent roast chicken. Everything was fresh. You could literally see the chicken getting roasted on the grill, so uncle was just working away hard. Delicious. The chicken breast was moist. That Nam Jim Jiao is such a, an acquired taste, but a, a very nice balance with that. The sticky rice. The sometime was okay. It was a little bit too fishy for me. But overall, this place was awesome. Alrighty, the next location we are at, guys, is one of my favorite Thai Chinese inspired foods. That is Khao Ka Mu, succulent, juicy pork knuckle on rice. Now, we're at a very, very famous place that many of you guys have probably seen before, but I just had to come here. It is the Cowboy Lady. So, Nika, that is her actually. She was made famous on Anthony Bourdain and we're here today to try it. So what do you got? Look at that. The beautiful pork knuckles. That is the broth, the brown beautiful sauce and it looks incredible. Okay, Alright guys, this place is getting pretty damn busy to be honest. It's legendary, it's famous. The late Amazing Anthony Bourdain is I believe what really made this place famous. So we're about to dig in but this dish looks incredible. Super simple dish to be honest and I feel like most Asian countries has something like this. We've got the beautiful rice small amount for the Thai size. We've got I believe this might just be salted egg or just standard boiled egg. It comes with a pickled uh, mustard greens on the side and you just put it onto your plate and then we've got what this place is known for is the beautiful, beautiful pork. You can see that pork skin on it as well, the pork fat, the knuckle, looks amazing. Normally when you come here as well, the lady is wearing a cowboy hat. I'm gonna assume she works on certain days. She's not working today, unfortunately. But still, come here, supposedly good food. Let's try this, eh? We've gotta try the pork. That's good. The soy sauce flavors really, really come through. It's a bit salty. That's why I need a bit of the rice with it. The bit I had was a little bit, not dry, but a little bit too thick. Took a little bit of effort to chew in, but the fat that accompanies it, you want to get some of that on with the pork. Voila. That's incredible. A little bit of the pickled greens as well. Mm. So crunchy. Adds an incredible sort of sour flavor. So it sort of contrasts with the saltiness of the, the pork really nicely. Try the egg as well. Just a normal boiled egg. I wish they simmered that in the actual broth of the pork as well so they have the, an extra soy sauce salty umami flavor on the outside but just a standard boiled egg to perfection though to be fair so it's a beautiful orange yolky i've sat down for maybe five minutes and this place is slowly getting packed now a lot of tour groups in and around here from western countries asian countries so you know she's famous they have this sauce on the side as well i'm not too sure if you're supposed to put that on with the actual food at all but Maybe you do. Not too sure. I haven't really had this with cow kamu before the sauce, so let's go ahead and try it. Here we go, just a little bit onto what I have left. Let's try this. Try and get a little bit of everything. 
grains, the pork, all right? It'll be all right. Mm. That's pretty nice. It also adds a bit of a kick. I feel like there's ginger, garlic, definitely chilies, lime in there as well. It's a little bit soury, so there's almost all of the five flavor palettes being hit in the mouth in this meal, to be honest. I am finished. That meal was absolutely incredible. Such a very affordable rate as well for such a quite a famous restaurant, if you will. It's essentially a street food. Where we are right now is pretty much a little night market. It's one of the many night markets within Chiang Mai. There's quite a variety of foods here as well. A lot of outdoor seating too. If you ever make it down to this area, come to this lady. Guys, we've made it to the iconic Tapai Gate, which means we're at the best bit of today's video. We're at the Chiang Mai Walking Street Night Market. Here we go. This is only open on a Sunday and it stretches over a kilometer. So as soon as you walk into the night market, the main street is just littered with clothing, souvenirs, and then there's a bunch of little alleyways. There's like six or seven alleyways that leads into temples, stupas. That's where you'll find majority of the foods. There's so much food. Chinese influence, goose, Japanese inspired takoyakis, just a whole wide variety of Thai food as well. Everything looks delicious, but I'm looking for some specific Northern Thai foods. Alrighty guys, I found what I've been looking for. Northern Thai sausages. I've already gone and ordered, but this auntie over here is cooking up a feast. We've got a bunch of intestines over here, but this is what I'm looking for. Gone ahead and got a Sai U, which is a Northern Thai sausage. Got a Sai Kro as well, and then one of these fresh Nam Yangs as well going on. We'll see shortly, but we're gonna eat it with some green chili, some cabbage, cucumber. You've got a whole variety of other meats as well. It's like beef balls, fish balls. Let's get stuck into it. We've got three sausages or skewers, if you will. Wow, it's super oily. That bag is, is oily as. Okay. And then we've got some veggies as well. What we saw before, the cabbage, chilies, cucumber. Normally you can eat this stuff with sticky rice as well, but I'm not too hungry. A little snack like this is perfect. All right, let's start with the main event, the Sai U. This is no doubt my favorite sausage in Thailand, maybe even in the world, to be honest. This little bad boy right here, nothing better. You've got galangal, you've got chili, lemongrass, onion, garlic, curry powder as well, curry paste or something like that. This is divine. Let's go ahead and try this. Wow. This one's spicy as well. There's so much flavor in this. This, yeah. This, you gotta come and get one of the Sai Uls in Northern Thailand, Chiang Mai, incredible. Right, let's go back in for another bite, but this time with some of the cabbage, cucumber. It's actually pretty damn spicy already. I don't think I'm gonna bite that chili, that green one, but normally you're supposed to eat it with it. Oh. One go. Wow. Combination of the spicy sausage, the cabbage, the cucumber. It's a refreshing contrast, which is amazing. Mm. In today's video, we've had a lot of food that actually crosses over with countries like Laos and Burma, since they're sort of on the border of Northern Thailand. And if you go to those countries as well, Laos, Burma, or Myanmar, as it's called now, you'll find these very similar, if not the exact same sausage as well. Next up, we have the Sai Krok Isan, which is essentially fermented sausage. I'm pretty sure this one is it. You can get the smaller ones as well. Um, that's what I asked for, but she gave me the little big thick boy. So let's try this. Wow, this one is so fresh. Definitely fermented sausage. I've really had these, so I'm not too sure about the origin, but 
it's definitely fermented pork sausage and it's almost like vermicelli inside there's these little white strands of noodle like are inside it this is okay this oh we should have started off with this one because once you have the sayur which has so much flavor from all the herbs inside it this is sort of a little bit of a step down it's still nice though this is the last sausage i believe this one is nem yang i want to assume once again it is also fermented pork sausage because that's what nem is in vietnamese but let's try this one yeah fermented mmm this is my second favorite after the sayur i've had many of these before in thailand actually and i cannot get enough of this one as well it's got this soury kick to it and then there's some black pepper garlic in it as well mm. this is delicious this isn't spicy it's got no chilies you're supposed to eat it with green chilies as well but i'm a bit of a baby so this just with some cabbage is delicious mm. nothing beats snacking on some northern thai sausages all right guys we've made it to the other side over a kilometer what an incredible northern thai food journey we've had today over six seven meals everything i would absolutely eat again some of the best food in asia maybe even in the world this market behind me it's probably smart if you come here with an empty stomach. They've got such a wide variety of foods, international foods, fried foods, desserts. Then you've also got souvenirs and clothing that you can buy as well. So much more, but I'm absolutely stuck from all the food we've been today. Guys, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something as well. I'll see you on the next one.